you is the Mount of Olives. So many things have happened on the Mount of Olives. Read about Yeshua as he came up on the Mount of Olives, wept over Jerusalem and said, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how often I would have hovered you as a hen with her own brood, but you would not. He said, Your house is left to you desolate until you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Now, Matthew's gospel writes, Until you say, Blessed is your Savior that has come. Very interesting to say the least, uh, the, the record here. Some people think that that's the Dome of the Rock, or excuse me, the Temple uh, Mount, that the temple would be left desolate. And of course, it could be that as well. But I've wondered that if it wasn't, that the Jewish people would have their heart desolate. That the human heart that was meant to receive the Holy Ghost would be desolate until they recognized Yeshua to be their Savior. That's a hard thing for Jewish people to accept or to even believe that Yeshua was indeed the Messiah. But let's examine the story of David a little bit. Let's look and see the incredible types that are laying right here in this beautiful story. You know, Absalom was David's son, but God never intended Absalom to reign in his place. It was Solomon that was to reign in his place. But what happened? Well, we know the story though. Absalom, when David was getting old, decided that he would rise up against his father. It's kind of ironic if you think about it because Absalom's name in Hebrew is Avi Shalom, my father is peace. Well, you think about that type there, Yeshua was called in Isaiah 9, 6, the, the Prince of Peace, the Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father. So Absalom doesn't recognize his father and who he really is. He doesn't have a revelation, we might say, of who his father is. Just like the Jews of today, they do not recognize that Yeshua is indeed the Messiah. In fact, they've outright rejected him. But that was for a purpose as well, because the same thing happens in the story of David. He does, they do not recognize, Absalom and the men that joined with him never recognize that, that David was the anointed king. But yet, the strange thing, there were those that did stay with David, that believed him, just like Jesus had his apostles that were loyal to him. Well, finally, what happens? He takes, he comes over on the Mount of Olives just like Yeshua did. And he weeps over Jerusalem as well. An odd thing happens though. In his case, he leaves behind 12 concubines. That's David, that is. And he tells them to care for his house. Now, a concubine is a common law wife. She's not quite had her proper marriage ceremony yet as a regular wife would have. And we do hear that the bride of Yeshua is engaged to be married. She's a legal wife, but she's not had her marriage ceremony. And there are 10 virgins that are spoken about in, in, the, in the New Testament. Well, they do take care of, as David said, they take care of the house while he's gone. Absalom does abuse them, much like the Jews abuse the Christians today, but yet the Christians are still loyal, those that are loyal, I should say, are still loyal. Regardless of the treatment that the Jews give them, they're still loyal and caring for Yeshua's house while he's away. That's one thing that we should be found doing, being loyal to Yeshua by caring for the Jewish people. The story goes on though. David leaves the Mount of Olives here with his men. He goes over to Baharim and there Shimei, one of Saul's descendants, come out. He's a, from the tribe of Benjamin, cursing David. His men wanted to cut off his head. David refused. He said, let him alone. The Lord has told him to do this. Much like the Jews spit on Jesus, and Jesus said, let him alone. Of course, we know Peter wanted to cut, he cut the ear off of the high priest as well, was willing to fight for Yeshua. But he said, do you not know that my father is able to summon 10 legions of angels right now? It wasn't by the sword. Of course, David, maybe not even knowing what was going on, it was the same with him. It wasn't by the sword that this was going to happen. Anyway, two priests are left behind. Very interesting. We can all see, see the two witnesses in this case here. And before David actually comes back, before he's even willing to cross the River of Jordan, he said, get the people and one heart and one mind. And only then he would return. Yeshua crossed the River of Jordan as well. That's what we call the river of life or the river 
death when we cross the resurrection, and he's waiting to come back as well. But Yeshua cannot return until Israel is in one mind and one accord for him. That's the job of the two witnesses, to bring the Jews into one mind and one accord, to fulfill Zechariah 12's prophecy. Then they can, so that way they can see him whom they have pierced, and they will weep as a family that lost their only son, and say, where did you get these wounds? He said, in the house of my friends. They will look upon him whom they have thrust through, as the Bible says. And the Jews like to say that doesn't mean hands pierced. Well, his side was thrust through by the Roman soldier. And had it not been, that life would have never left him that was inside of him. That life, which was the exact same life that was in Adam when God first breathed in his nostrils the breath of life. He breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, which was God's own life, God's divine name attached to life in a plural form, going into this human body called Adam. And that's why when he takes Eve from that body, he never has to breathe in her nostrils the breath of life. Why? She's filled with the Holy Ghost when she comes out, just like John the Baptist came forth with the Holy Ghost from his mother's womb. A type, Christ being a type of the second Adam, well, you have to have a type of the church or the bride of Christ, which was John. And he came forth filled with the Holy Ghost. Of course, Jesus did leave a beautiful sign when he tells the woman at the well, you knew who you were talking to, you'd ask me for a drink and I would give you water. You don't have to come here anymore. Well, he gave her that sign to watch for. That was the waters of life. To see when the rock would be smitten, much like when Moses had the children of Israel or the elders of Israel, they went out and they smote the rock there. When they smote that rock, the water came forth. They may have grumbled in the past, but if they didn't drink that water from that rock, they would perish. And even though Israel has grumbled in the past about who Yeshua really is, soon the water will come forth, just as it did 2,000 years ago. The Holy Spirit will be poured out. And if they don't drink, those who don't drink, they will perish. I'm Stephen Benton with the Dean Institute of Biblical Research. God bless you from the Temple Mount in Israel. Shalom.